Hey you guys, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. I'm Zelda Master, and well, in this episode, we're going to be showing Lineback the green symbol that we got on our speed chart in the previous episode, and see what he thinks about it. Uh, because, you know, most likely it will lead to something pretty important. So let's go ahead and make our way back to the town here on Murky Island, and the first thing we'll notice before heading to Lineback is that the shop has now opened. I believe if you talk to this guy, I'll tell you what it is. So this is a treasure teller. Um, the, the treasure teller basically has opened, so believe it or not, how this works is he tells you how much your treasure costs, and he'll buy it from you, so you can sell stuff to him, so let's go ahead and talk to him, and, uh, see how much our treasure costs, because we're gonna need some rupees in the upcoming things we plan on buying, so let's see if we can sell our stuff for a good price. Now, Zora scale, uh, 50 rupees. Let's not sell anything that is, uh, less than... Like 500 rupees or something. I believe it goes like from 50 to 150 all the way to 800 and then to like 1,500 or something like that. So if we get something for like 1,500 or 800, I will sell it. So let's see how much the Goran Ember costs. Oh, put 800 for that. Alright, let's go ahead and sell it. You get a lot of money from this and it makes Treasure actually like useful within the game. So it's a good thing this guy uh, is willing to buy stuff from us. Even though some of the things are really... um you know, cheap, but some of the things are really expensive. Look, we, we have two uh, Helmarok uh, plumes, and we can sell them to him and get ourselves uh, a lot of a lot of money from this, because he's going to buy it from 800 each. And we can also sell ship parts, but I want to collect all the ship parts within the game, so I'm not going to bother selling it to him. Let's see how much he wants this Rudo crown for. I still find it funny how it was worn by, you know, a Princess Zora, and there are, like, so many of these. How many princesses were there, but whatever. It looks like he didn't want any Zora things, but he bought the Helmarok uh, plume and the Goron Ember, so I guess he's not into the Zora species and what they wear and their type of merchandise and stuff like that, because he was gonna buy both of the Zora treasures we had for only uh, 50. So, yeah, um, let's go ahead and make our way to the mailbox, and I've been ignoring the mail for quite a bit, so most likely we have several letters. Here's a letter from the old Wafer, and let's see what he has to say. So, have you found yourself on the path of wafering, Link? Uh, don't fret. If you haven't, you may already be on the way and not and not know it. Okay, well, whatever. Um, I'm just going to skip through this because I don't really care what Wafer has to say. If you have anything good to give me, I'll take it. And wow, okay, so he's going to give us a bell anchor. I think we have this, though, so that's going to suck. He didn't even give us anything cool because... I'm pretty sure we have a bell anchor that we found before, or we like bought from Beetle or something. Let's go ahead and check. Yeah, we do! Wow, okay. I can see it on my ship. I don't even have to check. Well, that's great. Um, so I have to head over to the shipyard, because you can easily switch stuff at the shipyard. But let's go ahead and see what other special delivery we have incoming for us. So, um, you know, let this uh, guy tell us what he wants. So the Salvatore. Okay, so this guy, I believe he is... Um, I don't even remember this guy, so Master of Divergence, so come by, I mean, if you want, play a game or two. Oh, okay, so there's a mini game that has opened up and we can play games, nice. And we got ourselves a Wisdom Gem, sweet. Definitely worth it, okay. And I'm not entirely sure if we have any more mail. I'm pretty sure we do, because it's a pretty important message we should be getting after taking on the Temple of the Ocean King the second time and getting ourselves that um, weird green symbol on our sea chart. So if we... Uh, exit a house and, uh, or enter a house and re-exit it, we should have a new letter, because it kind of, like, you know, refreshes the world, and if you have another letter, yeah, okay, so this is from Edo, uh, from Cannon Island, I believe he's gonna tell us that he is willing to, yes, uh, he's working on a salvage arm, which we're gonna actually need the salvage arm, I and mean, that's what we're gonna do right now, we wanna head over to him and buy uh, salvage arm from as soon as possible because that's gonna help us out salvage like all the treasure we found with our treasure maps and and whatnot so let's go ahead and let land back check out the secret mark uh, here on the scene oh, okay so it will you know help us find the Sun key that will open up the temple of courage and that's where we'll find the spirit of courage and all of that stuff so this is pretty important let's go ahead and go now and get started now I'm just gonna say this now so I don't waste time um, we can't really do anything to that symbol that is currently on our map. It's, it's under, it's underwater, basically. Um, so, I'm not gonna bother heading there. Luckily, since we got a letter from Edo, we're just gonna head over to Edo and buy a salvage arm so we can salvage 
um, in this current location. I'm gonna go ahead and circle it. So yeah, I don't even think I need to circle it. I mean, it already has a symbol on the map, but just so you guys get what I mean. And once we get the salvage arm, we can pretty much uh, salvage all the treasure that you know the X's show on our C chart as well, which is going to be pretty freaking awesome. So first thing I want to do is check out Beetle and see if he has anything important for us. So let's let's check it out. Oh, he actually sells uh, a bigger bomb bag. So let's go ahead and get it. We'll be able to carry, I believe, 30 bombs. So let's uh, let's buy that. Uh, it's a thousand rupees, but that's not too expensive because uh, yeah, I have a lot of rupees thanks to um, Treasure Teller. Let's go ahead and buy this as well. It's only 60 rupees, but I'm sure I can sell it for even more to a treasure teller. So, yeah, we're doing business as well. Let's go ahead and buy this, uh, wisdom gem as well. Um, the mask beetle, which is like the mask shop, uh, I believe he sells a piece of heart for 1,500. I should have enough if I don't buy anything else right now. But I think I'm gonna buy this stone chimney because it looks rather dandy. So, yeah, I don't really care. I'll, I'll go on a shopping spree. Who cares? I have a lot of money. Now, um, you may say, oh, but you still will, you should have enough money at least to buy the piece of heart. Well, I wanna buy the salvage arm as well. And they come in different prices. Now, it's not like that there's different types of salvage arms, it's just that the way you do it in your game is like, um,. How do I say this? Uh, you, you'll see. I don't really want to like get into it until I actually make it to Edo. So let's head over to Edo and and he'll basically give us the price and it's random each time. Um, and you'll see how it works. So let's go ahead and uh, yeah, we're on Cannon Island. Let's talk to Edo and let him know about all of this stuff that you know we're willing to buy and we have a lot of rupees in our pocket. So we don't care how expensive it is. Actually, I'm not gonna pay for like a thousand rupees for just a salvage arm because you actually need to advance in the game so you know it's not a side quest item where you have to go out of your way and buy it so I don't see a point in spending so much money anyways yes yeah, it's finally complete so this the salvage arm will let you reach the bottom of the sea uh, for sunken treasure and all of that cool stuff so we're gonna be buying it from him but how this works is um, he wants you to yell at him and the louder you yell the the cheaper the salvage arm is gonna get so you have to be really into it and that's basically how it works so yeah I don't really want to yell that loud um so what I'm gonna do is this this could be like a cheap method if you don't want to yell too loud you should blow into your microphone um so I'm gonna try that I'm like gonna talk really close where is the mic I can't even see the microphone on the 3ds I don't know where it's located I'm just gonna blow into it and see what happens so let's just do that all right um, for that scream, a thousand rupees, no way, okay, maybe I shouldn't blow into the microphone, maybe I should yell, but like I said, I don't want to yell too loud, so I'm just gonna, like, put my mouth on the 3DS and just say words, blah, 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 stuff, things, okay, you can't even hear me, can he? A thousand rupees again, I don't know how I'm supposed to get it, but I know he can sell it to you for like 300, now I'm not paying a thousand rupees for this, so, let me try again. What? <laughs> what was that? I didn't even hear anything. No <laughs> Jesus, dude. Okay, let's try again. This is really hard, actually. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Okay, if I can locate the microphone. Okay, I think I found it. Okay, I'm gonna try now. Wait, you can't, you can't even hear that, can he? Not bad. What? Okay, I don't even know what I was doing there. I was like blowing and then I started talking and he's like, not bad. Alright, deal. I'll take it. Um, I don't know if you can get less than 300 rupees, but you know, I always got the, you know, awesome bargain for 300. So yeah, never buy it for a thousand. That's just bull crap. Um, because you can easily drop it all the way down to 300. So, yeah, there we go. We finally got the salvage arm. It took me forever, though, because apparently you couldn't hear me. I don't know uh, if my microphone picked up all of that, you know, heavy blowing. And, and if it didn't, I'm going to have to, like, cut that out because it must be really annoying to hear. But, yeah, anyways, now that we have the salvage arm, if we go ahead and click menu, we can actually access it and salvage. I wonder if it will let us salvage immediately. Oh, it is. Okay. You don't want to do that, you like seriously don't want to do this because you're not going to get anything at the bottom of the sea. So we're just going to go ahead and click the backspace button and head over to an area that you can actually salvage, which is uh, over here. Um, now I'm considering of just saving all of the other 
treasure maps that we've uh, found and not salvage them yet. Like, I'll do like a montage where I salvage them all because we're gonna have to like sail all around the sea to like get them. I mean, there's four so far in the northwestern like uh, vicinity here. So, I don't know, or rather, uh, what's it called? Southeast, I believe. Yeah, so no, southwestern. Wow. I don't even know uh, which location we were at. But, anyways, let's go ahead and use a salvage arm and try to uh, see what's in the bottom of the sea, guys. So, here we go. Now now it's time to play the minigame. I skipped out of the dialogue because I, you know, was trying to exit it. But basically, how this works is, uh, as you can tell, the salvage arm has uh, HP. And if it gets hit, it loses like one diamond or whatever that's supposed to be. And you have this gear thing where you move it back and forth, where it goes left or right. Obviously, it it's not it didn't respond immediately because you know it can't go as fast as uh, you trigger the switch to go. But um, yeah, you also have this small thing where you move it up or down, and that depends on how fast or slow it goes. Now you have to get the chest, or you like immediately fail. So you have to make sure the salvage arm is uh, able to catch it. And if you don't catch it, then you kind of like fail your mission because it only can go up and then it, uh, it only can go down rather, and then it goes up. So yeah, you want to make sure you get a catch. Now um, the damage that you know happens to your salvage arm is permanent. How this works is you're supposed to head back to the shipyard, I believe, on uh, Murkay Island and um, and repair it for 50 rupees every time you want the salvage arm to regain its HP and all of that. So yeah, it's pretty important that you don't damage your salvage arm, especially if you're planning on you know going you know in a huge adventure and collecting a bunch of treasure and all of that stuff. But anyways, going to open up this chest and get ourselves a sun key. So yeah, that's what happened. So huh, strange looking. It it, looked, it looked, honestly looked really cool um cuz it has like a smiley face and all. But anyways, now it's time to make our way to uh Malida Island and you know, head there because that's where the temple is and we needed the sun key. I mean, I'm pretty sure we've seen it when we went through Wayfarer's secret passage. We saw the sun door. And now that we have the sun key, we should be able to open it. So, yeah, there's really nothing stopping us here. We just need to cruise to Malaita Island, and we'll be able to make our way to the Temple of Courage and, uh, you know, save the spirit of courage. So, yeah, pretty exciting. Um, now, this has to be, like, one of the coolest bits within the game. And you're going to see what I mean. I'm, I'm kind of spoiling it ahead of time, but, you know, it's not that easy. It's not smooth sailing to Malaita Island. Because as we approach the island, we shall find. Now wait for it. And also, you can see the, you can see the temple over here. Looks so freaking cool, man. I I just love the way the islands look from like, on the great sea. Um, they look so cool. Okay, I'm I'm gonna ignore this uh, golden frog. I don't even think I can hit it. I'm not close enough to it. But as we approach the island and we're about to, uh, you know, depart, something's going to happen. As you can tell, because, yeah, we still didn't arrive, and now it's zooming in so close on the map, and a enemy appears. This is guarding the island, so, yeah. W wait, what is that? Yeah, what is it? <laughs> um, that nasty thing is between us and the island, kid. Now, its weak spot is, well, I guess, if you knew uh, what it would be, when it be a stew, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's be honest, it's, it's pretty obvious what the weak spot is. It's his eye, because... That's how all Zelda enemies are. Now, the easiest way to take on this um, enemy here is just to set your route to go back and forth like so, and just to keep trying to attack its eye. And it's really simple, and and stuff like that. You don't want to be too close to it, but I actually set my route to be extremely close. Now, the reason why we're going back and forth, it just generally makes it easier to dodge uh, the, these acid balls that it spits at you. So, I don't know, I just highly suggest having the route go back and forth. and. I want to hit its eye. Okay, maybe, maybe we should back up a little. You know, I'm just gonna go ahead and back up just a teeny bit, and then I'll readjust my route because I do want to hit its eye, and we're just a little too close to it. There we go. All right, and it does a heart damage, so you want to be careful. All right, there we go. Um, I readjusted my route. Um, I still think we're really close to it, actually. I don't know, but as long as we can avoid its acid balls, we'll be fine. And like I said, as long as you move, it's like super simple to avoid it. And you just want to constantly hit it in the eye after it does its whole, you know, spitting section. Now, you know what? I'm just not going to move. I'm going to see if I can do it like this. I think we can. 
It's easier to avoid when moving, but I think we'll be fine. Let's see, is it gonna stop? No, I think you have to actually be moving for it to like stop shooting these acid balls at you. I'm not entirely sure. I never actually stopped in track to see if it was gonna keep shooting it or not. Um, cause, I don't know, it was just my instinct to keep moving because it just didn't seem smart to, uh, you know, let it shoot acid balls at you like that, um, when you're just standing in place. Cause, like I said, you don't really, I mean, you could hit these acid, I don't even know if they're acid balls, they just look like acid balls. Um, but yeah, but my, my general instinct was to move, to avoid them, instead of just hitting them with your cannon, but... It's whatever, we're done, finally. Alas, you guys, you know, we were able to take it out. Only took like five hits or so, so yeah. And it honestly looked like it uh like disintegrated into sand, which is really weird. Um, like you know, the the sand of hours, kind of like the outer glass sand. I think that's a pretty cool like, you know, hint saying, Oh, like all of these monstrous enemies contain, you know, the the sand for the hourglass. But anyways, we have arrived to Malaya Island safe and sound. And yeah, I guess our first course of action is to grab our shovel and head over to where the um, the the lines intersect here that we had on our map that we drew, and head over to uh, yeah the secret passage that uh, Wafer made. And now, will you look at that? We can actually open up this sun door because we have the sun key, and we can advance onward, guys. So awesome. Um, so yeah, we're almost there. We're almost to the Temple of Courage. I believe if we go ahead and open up this hole, we'll be able to fall down and find a chest and pick up a wisdom gem, yeah! Alright, let's go ahead and now make our way back up here and continue venturing through this secret area that we haven't really got a chance to really explore. And there are some mini blends here, of course. I'm gonna kill them because they are annoying as heck. Because they're a lot harder to hit than other enemies, and, and yeah. So let's go ahead and hit this gossip stone and see what it has to say. So, Boeing Osha's home has a storehouse. Um, that storehouse has a tree outside, and its roots hide a buried prize. Dig there. Oh, Okay, let's go ahead and open up our sea chart so we don't forget. And if we click the island from the sea chart, we can easily, um... We can easily, like, access the island, and we're just gonna go ahead and put treasure there so we don't forget and I'll put an arrow to wow I'll, I'll, put, I'll put three arrows to Osha's house and and we should remember from that <laughs> so yeah there we go uh, now that we know that treasure is there I will come back there eventually and and you know get my treasure but anyways as we make our way up here we'll find this really weird looking um statue it's like a head statue if we go ahead and grab our boomerang I want to hit this guy first because I don't want him to beat me up, but if we go ahead and grab our boomerang, we can easily see it by moving the camera around. And, um, as you can tell, it's actually facing this weird looking eye door. So, I guess our first instinct is to, is to find more of these and have them face the eye door. Um, so let's go ahead and do that, and I wanted to tap it, and it had a laser shooting out of the eye on top of its other eyes on like on its forehead it's gonna have it aim at the eye door that's basically kind of it's kind of telling you what you're supposed to do here that you're supposed to activate these eyes and have it aim at the eye door so yeah um let's gonna kill these zora warriors though because don't want to mess with them even though they're like extremely easy but once we do that <gasps> another statue is going to appear and if we just go ahead and hit it the uh the eye on its forehead will shoot a really strong beam. It's like extremely strong. It goes through literally everything. Um, but yeah, we go ahead and aim it at the door. And remember that other one we saw? Let's go ahead and do the exact same thing. Now, that one was already aiming at the door, but there was no laser shooting out of it. So, yeah, it should be pretty obvious what we're supposed to do. And that is actually use our boomerang to hit it, just like that. And by hitting it, it will have the laser shoot out of its eye. And there we go, guys. With all of the power of the lasers, the door will open. And that pretty much does that. So, my headset is falling off, and I really want to readjust it, but I will do that after we end off the episode. So, I'm going to be ending off the episode here. Thank you all very much for watching. 
Um, I believe the statues, uh, okay, so it kind of tells you what we're supposed to do, but we already did that. So yeah, in the next episode, we're going to be entering the Temple of Courage and taking it on. So thank you all very much for watching this episode of The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. I've been Zelda Master, I'll catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.